welcome back to another one of my Arduino programming projects. In this project, I'm going to be showcasing a new invention of mine, which I'm sure by the looks of it, you could guess is an LED clock. With just a few hours of printing, plus a few more hours of wiring, we can create this beautiful clock. The clock runs off of three AA batteries and would look perfect as decoration in a modern environment. After showing off this project, I plan to create a few more for my family to display at their work. Now let's get right into the build. I first wanted to start out with the design process. For this I used Tinkercad. I first started by creating the digital characters that I will be putting the LEDs inside of. I tried to make this shape proportional so it's not too distorted on one side. I made it an outline in which the LED will sit inside of. I tried to scale it where the LEDs were small enough so the clock doesn't have to be so large and can sit on a desk and fit well. For this I measured the width of the WS2812B 5V LEDs and used that as the width of each spot on the digit. I had to create three eights, one colon, and a single one digit for the tens place for the hour mark. I also wanted to incorporate the AM and PM on a clock to signify if it was daytime or nighttime. For this, I also wanted to use regular LED bulbs instead of WS2812B LEDs to make it more fun and unique. Second, it would make this project small enough where I could fit all of the components on the 3D printer print bed. The print bed is 220mm by 220mm. The width of the project already was almost 200 millimeters, so we had no extra room to spare. I used my digital caliper to measure the size of the LED bulb and create a cutout of the A and the P and put holes in them for the bulb to sit snug in there. The next step was to create the sides and the front and back panels. This is always the easy step and one of the most fun steps when creating the enclosure because it's what people get to see, so it's important to make it visually appealing. I gave extra padding above and below the numbers for the Arduino, wiring, and batteries. I also wanted to round the edges instead of giving it a sharp point to make it look more elegant. Next, I had to allocate space for batteries. I have a battery template that I use to know how big the AA batteries are. I aligned three of the batteries in series and added walls around them. Then at the two ends, I added space for the wires to connect the positive of one end and the negative of the other end so I can run them to power the rest of the project. Finally, I had to add screw blocks to screw the back of the project into and make it flush with the rest of the project. I just created bricks and used my screw templates I built to put holes so I can screw into it. For the back of the project, I made four screw holes to match what I built for the base. Then I added three holes for the three buttons I need to use. The buttons are to increase the minute, hour, or the color mode for the LEDs. The last hole is the switch to turn on and off the project. To start off with the programming, we first have to signify all of our inputs and outputs in the setup function. We can assign our LED structure and how many LEDs we are going to be using in our WS2812B LED strip. We also have to assign pins to each pair of LEDs that will get displayed on the AM and the PM since those are bulbs. Next, we can set the button inputs to change the minute, hour, and color mode. In the loop function, we want to continuously read to see if the user has pressed any one of the buttons. If they do, we will run the designated function to either increase the time or color. Otherwise, I have a conditional statement that loops every 60 seconds, and once it does, it increases the minute digit. How the clock works is that there are four variables, one for each digit. The digit 4 will increase every 60 seconds. Once this increases to 10, it sets back to 0 and increases digit 3 by 1. If digit 3 equals 6, it will go back to 0 and increase the hour field by 1 and so on. This is how the code works in the add minute and add hour functions. Since I wired the digital numbers a bit weird, there was not a good way of identifying which LEDs are supposed to be lit up out of the 7 LEDs per digit. For this I had to create a double integer array and write out which LEDs should light up depending on what the digit on the clock says. If the clock displays a 4, we will light up LEDs 1, 2, 5, and 6 on the LED strip. Depending on the color mode, it will light up the LEDs in different colors. For the AM and PM, it will alternate once the hour on the clock reaches 12, then it will flip the sign. 
For the soldering phase, it took me about 5 hours to solder everything together. It takes quite a while to pre-tin the wires and each LED. Just alone there are 25 LEDs we need to cut individually, pre-tin each one, cut 3 wires for each LED, and pre-tin those, then solder all the LEDs together with these wires. Throughout this process, it is helpful to have a pair of helping hands to hold those wires together while you solder them. Overall, this is a beautiful project that can be a great learning experience for people who want to get into projects like these. It makes a great item to place on a desk. Using WS2812B LEDs with 3D printing opens up new opportunities to build awesome looking projects like these. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you have any questions and let me know your thoughts. As always, all of the diagrams will be posted on my website neha.com. While you're there, don't forget to share on Facebook and LinkedIn if you enjoyed the project. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.